and I am digital skills instructor for Literacy Pittsburgh. Um, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you. Let me know if for whatever reason you can't see it. All right. Okay. All right. Um, so this is Google Docs for tutors. And um, so what we're going to be talking about today is um, how to use Google Docs effectively to work with your students. Um, just uh, you can raise your hand or you can unmute yourselves. Who has shared a Google Doc before? Who, who, who has used Google Docs before? Maybe let's start with that. Who's used Google Docs before? Jennifer, okay, great. Oops. Anyone else? Okay. Um, well, um, this will be probably a lot of material for you if you haven't used Google Docs before. Um, but if you have, um, maybe some of this will be review. Uh, Google Docs are great because they enable you to collaborate with your student. Um, can you think of ways or can you think of reasons why you might want to be sharing documents with your students? Um, well, um, I think the ability to collaborate in real time is something that Google Docs makes possible, which is pretty great. Um, so uh, you can share a Google Doc with your students, so you can work on it in separate locations if you're doing um, remote instruction. Um, speaking from experience as a teacher, um, using Google Docs can be especially helpful if you're on Zoom or Teams and you want to see what your student is doing in a document in re real time. So, so it, it enables to uh, quite literally be on the same page. So uh, anyways, um, I think you could use Google Docs for a variety of exercises. Um, today we'll be taking a look at a writing prompt that I created and also um, a vocabulary worksheet. Uh, so Google Docs uh, will enable you to make these kinds of creative work worksheets for your students um, and then your students will be able to work on them and have their own copies digitally. So, and you'll be building up a nice library of worksheets uh, in your own uh, Google Drive. So anyways, um, here are the things we're going to try to get through today. Um, we'll talk up first about how to share a Google Doc with another person and um, how to control what someone can do with a shared Google Doc. Uh, we'll be talking about making comments or suggestions and responding to comments, accepting or rejecting suggestions. And essentially, I don't know if you can see it, we're going to be using, you're going to learn how to use Google Docs effectively with your students. So <clears throat> let's keep going here. So to share a document, you just need someone's email address. Uh, once they have the document, they can read it, make comments, or make changes to the document, depending on um, if you give them that permission or not. So I'm going to demonstrate this on my computer, and then we'll go through it step by step. So first of all, um, I have to get into my... Google account. Um, so let me do that. Um, does everyone here have a Gmail account or a Google account? Yes. Great. Okay. So you should know how to get into your account then. Um, oops. Okay. All right, so um, this is how we get into Google Docs. When you sign into your account, um, you're just going to come up to these 
squares in the corner here. And you can see docs is right there below Gmail. So you'll click on that. And then that takes you to your homepage. Um, so if you want to start a new document in Google Docs, you would just click on the plus sign, sort of like you click on compose for, for Gmail to start a new email. You click on the plus sign and it takes you to a new blank document. If you want to get back to see all the documents you've created, you just click the blue Docs Home button and it'll take you right back. So um, that's how you get into Google Docs. And um, now let's talk about sharing a document. So first, obviously you have to log into your Gmail or Google account, um, go to Google Docs, create a new document, and then click the share button in the upper right hand corner. And you'll add the person's email account and click send, and then a link will be sent to their email address. So for example, let's create a new document. And um, I'm going to come up to this share button, like I said, in the upper right hand corner. Notice my mouse becomes a little hand. That means I can click on it and something's going to happen. Uh, so I click share. Oh, now Google's smart. It gives you this prompt, name before sharing. Generally speaking, your document should have a name um, other than the default untitled document. So we'll call this um, Google Docs practice and save. Um, <clears throat> and now um, I'll share this with myself. So I just type in my email address that I, or you would type in your student's email address there. Um, you can send this to multiple people if for whatever reason you need to. Um, and then and click, then click send. Um, now notice right here, there's this button that says editor. So um, if you click here, you'll see that you have three choices, editor, commenter, and viewer. So we're gonna take just a quick second and talk about what those all mean. So um, essentially Google lets you limit what others can do with your document. Um, so these are what's called sharing privileges. So if someone, if you select viewer, that means your student could only read the document. They couldn't make any comments or any changes or any edits. So viewer, they can just look at it. Uh, in terms of commenter, um, <clears throat> commenter means they can only make comments or suggestions to the document. We're going to look at what comments and suggestions look at. So that will become a little more clear here. Um, but they can't actually make permanent changes to the document. Editors, however, can do whatever they like in the document. They can comment, they can read it, and they can make permanent changes. So um, <clears throat> I would say, well, let me open it up to you. What mode do you think you will use with your students? Editor, commenter, or viewer? Any thoughts? A little bit of maybe viewer to start and then um, trying the commenter just to see how it appears if you are able to type in some you know, words and how maybe the student wants to type in and see what words they choose to use. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Um, if you don't want the students to do anything with the documents, then I think viewer would be just fine. Um, uh, yeah, commenter. Um, that's, that's not, that's not a bad idea either. Um, <clears throat> just to give them kind of an introduction and then you could have conversations. Um, I would say if I'm going to do it, if I were to do it, um, and I really wanted the student to be able to interact with the document, uh, I would probably give them editor privileges. So, um, but you have choices. So um, it really just depends on what your goals are and what you want from the student or what you want the student to be able to do. So, um, so when you share a doc with someone, they get an email. Oh, I should pause and say, if you have any questions, I know I'm going quickly, 
Um, if you have any questions, just write them down and we will have a time for questions at the end. Uh, so when you share a doc with someone, um, they get an email and they can click to open it. There's an open button. So this email, um, notice there's a exclamation point and this says this says and it says this email grants access to this item without logging in um, so your students don't have to have a gmail account in order to open the documents you send them um, they'll just they'll just their message will look like this it'll have a little warning um, but that's a nice feature of google docs that anyone can open documents that are shared right so uh, you can also share Google Docs by creating and sharing a link with someone. So you'll copy the link and then you'll paste it wherever you need it, like an email or a Zoom chat, and people you share the link with can open the Google Doc. So um, with the link, you can also change the permissions between viewer, commenter, and editor. Um, you'll just click that downward arrow. And so step one is the same as sharing it via email, click the share button. Then you do wanna make sure that the link is unrestricted. So um, you can click the arrow next to the words um, if, you, if you need to change it, but you do wanna make sure anyone with the link can access it. So I think that's probably the default setting, but just in case it doesn't say any, anyone with the link, um, click the arrow and change it so that it does. Um, here is where you can do sharing privileges, depending on what you want your student to do. If you want them to be able to type or if you want them to just look at it, just think about how you want your student to interact with the document and select the permissions accordingly. And then you'll click the copy link button and that copies it to the uh, figurative clipboard in your computer. And then you can go and paste the link into an email or a Zoom chat, for example. Um, I have pasted links into Zoom chat before, and I find that's definitely an effective way to help students get right to the document rather than sharing it with them via email, then they have to open their email and click open. If you just share the link in the Zoom chat, it's quicker. So a little teaching tip there. Um, um, and in order to paste something, uh, as you may be aware, you can use the keyboard shortcut control V, or you can right click and a menu will pop up and then you can select paste. And then you'll just uh, put the link in the document and send it to the student um, via email or via Zoom. So let's do a quick review here. Um, where will your students see that you have shared a Google Doc with them? How will your student know that you've shared a link, uh, shared a Google Doc with them? In the link? Yes, they could see the link. Where will they find the link? In a Zoom or a Teams meeting? Yes, in a Zoom or a Teams meeting. Where else? In an email? In an email, exactly. Yes, their email or in the Zoom chat. Um, and how do I get a link to share the Google Doc? What are, what are the steps I need to follow if I wanna, if I wanna share this document? How do, I, how do I share a link to this document? What do I need to click on? I think you went to share and then it gave you the option to choose to copy the link. Exactly. Control C that. Mm -hmm. I think I see it actually. I know there's probably a button there. I can't see with my, um, on my monitor right here, but I know you got in there somewhere. <laughs> so I just yes. started digging around. And when I see that little link, it looks like a little infinity sign, almost uh -huh. like infinity. I love it. Copy yes. paste. Very good, Adrian. Yes. So you click the share button. And it pops up this box and you can either, either you add their email up at the top um, or you can click copy link. 
And if you click copy link, then it copies the link and it'll tell you that it's copied. Um, and then you can paste it where you need to. Now notice right here, it says restricted. This is what I was talking about that you wanna make sure um, anyone with the link can open it. So make sure, make sure if it says it's restricted to change it to anyone with the link, okay? And here's again, where you can see how to share the document um, with different levels of access, basically. Um, so you would just click beside that. All right, so that is sharing a Google Doc. All you need is this share button up here, okay? Um, <clears throat> all right, so this is a little different for me, this session, because whenever I'm teaching, I always incorporate time for my students to practice. So this is a little different for me, just kind of going right through the materials. So like I said, if you have any questions or you're not following, um, just um, write it down and I'll be sure to address it at the end. So um, actually, you know what, let's pause. Does anyone have any questions so far? We okay? All right. Um, okay, so let's keep going here. Um, who can only write suggestions or comments on a Google Doc? Which of those? Uh, uh, B. <laughs> yes, B, commenter, very nice. Um, and then who can make any changes they want to the Google Doc? A. A, that's correct. And who can only read a Google Doc? Process of elimination leaves us with? Viewer. Viewer, ding, ding, ding. Okay, good. All right, so that's getting into Google Docs and sharing a Google Doc, either via email or through a copied link. So um, a nice thing about Google Docs is it does make the process of giving students feedback easy. Uh, you can make comments or suggestions on whatever your students have typed in the document. Uh, we're gonna look at a writing prompt that you might use with a student. Uh, I actually adapted this from the from a Journey to Success workbook. Um, I'm not sure uh, if, what type of students you have, if they're ESL or GED or something else, but um, uh, we'll, we'll look at this writing prompt. Um, I think it's something that could also be shared with ESL students. Um, so I have responded to the writing prompt as if I were the student, okay? And then uh, we're gonna use that to, I'm gonna use that to demonstrate how to make comments and suggestions as the tutor. So um, a comment is simply a thought or an observation about the document. So in a comment, you can offer feedback or suggest changes that a student can make to the document and then the student can make them. So, um, and then if you change your mind about a comment, you can always edit or delete it. So a comment is, gives you a chance to offer feedback or suggest changes. Um, so I'll show you this in just a sec. First, in order to make a comment, you highlight the text that you wish to address, and then you click on the plus symbol, and then you type in your comment and press enter. Let's look at this in real time this i don't want to be in this document i want to go back to see all my documents so i click on the docs home button here is the tutors conference writing prompt so um this is an exercise in writing a letter to the editor so um there's a little description at the top of the page about what a letter to the editor is and what it should include. So you can offer a little bit of instruction on your handout um, to start if you'd like. Um, and then um, this exercise, like I said, this came from the Journey to Success workbook. Um, then there was a plan your writing section. 
um, to give your students a chance to start to formulate their thoughts about the topic. Um, so they state what their opinion is, air pollution is a concerning problem, and then they think of different reasons why that's a problem, you know, supporting evidence, and then they come up with their conclusion. Uh, so, um, that is the year itself. Um, so we're going to look at this now. Um, this is what your student has written, and you want to make comments on it. So first sentence, my name is Daya and I am part of the immigrant community. All right, so I wanna make a comment on that sentence. So I'm gonna highlight it and notice when I highlight it, these buttons over here pop up. So you're gonna click the plus to add a comment. Um, and you could say something like, I think you may have forgotten the word of, you are part of the immigrant community. And then once you've typed in your comment, you just click comment and there it appears on the side. Um, so that's how you make a comment. Um, obviously you wanna be polite and thoughtful here. Um, <clears throat> so let's, uh, let's, try, let's try that comment again. So it looks like they use the British spelling of neighborhood. Um, so we could comment on that. Um, you could change this to the American spelling. <laughs> okay. Um, so there's another comment and we'll do one more. So Pittsburgh has seen a humongous increase in the use of private transportation and the number of industrial sectors in recent years. So we're going to highlight that word and we'll add a comment, um, word choice. Uh, Okay, so then um, if you're doing this via Zoom, your student can see your comments as you're typing them in. Um, and then uh, if they're seeing it, if they're, if you're not, if they're doing it as homework, um, then they'll see these comments when they, when they open the document. So that's how you make a comment. You just highlight the text that you want to comment about and click the plus sign. Pretty straightforward. Um, so now I'm gonna switch roles here and I'm gonna pretend that I'm the student. So um, I can easily see and respond to the comments. Um, so after I read the comments, uh, I can reply to them and then I can decide if I want to make any changes. So uh, the conversation can just continue alongside or on the side of the document um, as needed. So let's go back to our example here. Um, so in order to respond to a comment, um, I just click on it and then this box pops up and then I say, yes, you are right. Thank you. I will. and then you reply. And notice nothing happens in the document itself, okay? It, the entire conversation is taking place on the right-hand side of the page here. Um, so I think this could be an effective method to use with your students um, because then they need to go back into the document and make the changes themselves. Um, we'll see another way to approach this in just a second, but um, this way the student can respond to your comment and then go ahead and make the changes themselves. So um, maybe your student is a little sassy and they don't wanna change the spelling. So 
they might say they prefer the British spelling, uh, then word choice, a better word to use here would be larger significant. Um, Okay, so then let's say your student does go in and make the changes. Um, well, I spelled humongous wrong. <laughs> I didn't know that was a real word. Um, so now I, as the student, I've gone in and made the changes you suggested as the tutor. And now I have all these comments kind of hanging out over here on the side of the page. Um, in order to get rid of them, you can do, you can resolve the discussion is the terminology. So all to do that, you click the check mark and it disappears. So I would say once um, your student has responded to your comments and done whatever it is that you suggested in the comment, um, then you could uh, go ahead in and resolve the discussion. Um, here is the button, these three dots. If you type a comment and you need to change your comment, you click on the three dots and here's where you can edit or delete the comment. So once you make a comment, if you've made a mistake or you decide you don't want that comment, just click on the three dots and you have choices. So, but in order to resolve the discussion and get rid of the comments, you just click on the plus and whoop, they disappear. So um, that's what I would suggest is resolving those discussions and comments once the student has already acted upon them. Okay, so that's comments. Uh, any questions about comments? Okay, like I said, I think comments could be very effective because it does give a student a chance to read your feedback. You could comment on the grammar, uh, for example. Um, you know, if you're if you're trying to incorporate a particular grammar lesson, you could say something like, "You need the past participle here," for example, uh, and you could either tell them what the past participle is or let them think it through themselves. So um, you can give them whatever kind of feedback you think is going to be the most helpful for them to accomplish the task. So that's commenting. Um, now, um, you can also make suggested edits. Um, so if I make a suggested edit, then uh, the student would be able to see my suggestions and can accept my suggestions, reject them, or reply to them. So um, as the tutor, if you're going to make suggested edits, you need to be in suggesting mode, okay? Um, then, then you can make the changes you would like to see in the document. So let's talk about that. So right up here, there's this box under the share box that says editing. And if you hover over it, it tells you you're in editing mode, okay? To make comments or suggestions, you need to be in suggesting mode. So you, don't forget to make this change. If you stay in editor mode, you'll just be making the changes and there will be, it, it will be as if nothing has happened. Or it, you know, you'll just make the changes. But if you go into suggesting mode, um, it'll appear as suggestions. So let's uh, see what else we could talk about. Oh, the second sentence. I am worried about the increasing effect of air pollution in our neighborhood and in the surrounding areas. Okay, so. If I want to just go ahead and suggest the change, um, what I could do is I could highlight the word worry, press backspace, and then type in the correct word. Uh, I believe that would be a past participle right there. Um, so notice that your suggestion uh, will be in green. Um, and then this little box over here will appear on the side, similar to a comment box, but different. This is the suggestion box. Um, and it will say in words what you're suggesting. So replace worry with worried. 
That's how you make a suggestion. So let's try that again. Um, if I come down to the third sentence here in the second paragraph, the hospital around the area has seen a rise in the number of patients with symptoms of chronic illness. And it is important that people and government authorities know this is dangerous situation as soon as possible. Okay, so there's two mistakes in this sentence. So if you were gonna correct those or suggest those corrections to your student, you could add the S to hospitals. And that time I did not, I did not backspace hospital. I just added the S and Google Docs automatically knew that I was trying to make a replacement. So that's what it says over here in the suggestion box, replace hospital with hospitals. Um, and then down here, we'll add the article A. Um, and then that appears as a suggestion. So that's how you make suggestions. Um, I would say if your students um, are more advanced and um, don't need as much explanation, they just need to have their mistakes corrected, um, then suggesting mode would be fine. Um, I think um, I would probably lead towards commenting mode uh, or towards making comments rather than making suggestions, um, but both are, both are possible. The comments just allow for a little more explanation and they force your student to make the changes themselves. Um, and when you do it as a suggestion, it's a little bit more like just telling them the right answer rather than having them think about it or explain it themselves. Um, but like I said, if you if the student just needed some simple corrections, then I think suggesting would be fine. So that's how you make suggestions. Um, so uh, with suggestions, then your students have a choice. They can either accept, reject, or reply to the, to the suggestion. So um, let's go ahead and look at the example. So now, I'm no longer the tutor, now I'm the student. Now I wanna make suggestions. So I go ahead and come over to the comment. Um, no, I don't wanna make suggestions. As a student, I need to respond to the comment. Yes, as a student, I'm responding to the comment. So I have three choices. I can accept the suggestion with the check mark, okay? I can reject the suggestion with the X, or if I click on the, the suggestion, then I can reply to it. So um, you can start a conversation or they can, they can respond to you um, that way as well. So um, if I just want to accept the suggestion, then I click the check mark and now it made the change permanent. It took away the wrong word and it left the correct word. So if you accept the suggestion, the green, suggestion changes to black and the suggestion becomes the actual wording. Uh, so um, let's say I wanted to reject this suggestion. Um, maybe I'm still not clear on the difference with between singular and plural. Uh, so if I reject the suggestion and I click the X, then the original hospital without an S remains, okay? So if you reject the suggestion, it just disappears and no changes are made. Um, and for the last one, uh, I could just reply, thanks, uh, reply. And then, um, then I could go ahead and accept the suggestion. But once you accept the suggestion, then the suggestion box does disappear. So uh, that is how uh, you, your student could respond to any suggestions or suggested edits that you made. Um, <clears throat> so uh, those are the two ways you can offer your student feedback. And Adriana, excuse me. Yes. Can I interrupt you just for a moment? Because sure. this is super helpful, how okay. you're walking us through and you're sharing the screen. And I'm loving it in the sense that I wanted to ask you, if you know, if you happen to know, I mean, I can 
fiddle with this more than capable of doing that with Google Docs, but for the benefit of anyone else that's interested, the comments on the panel on the right side, they turn out to be a really helpful um, way to recall what some of the edits were and when they were selected, why they were cha changed, obviously, what the error was and then what the new term was. Do you happen to know how we can keep that comments panel from not disappearing in a sense that should we just maybe have a, um, a document that shows that we don't accept all changes, that we just leave those changes as they are proposed, because it's kind of nice how you showed one of the strike through and one is the new word. So you can see what was the error and you can remember it. You can recall it later if you keep mm -hmm. that in a sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you I mean, it? yeah, no, that's, that's a good point. Um, I mean, <clears throat> you could, instead of asking the student to accept the suggestions, you could just, um, you know, you could just talk about the student with the suggestions that you made. Um, that yeah, I was thinking that's good because even um, I've done some editing, not using Google Docs. I love it that we can share it so you know, like clearly and cleanly, meaning it's easy to right. move from one person to another. But sometimes it's like just saving that document as another file with the new name, like final or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, suggestions accepted. So you can always refer back to what was the version that was the messed up version. Oh, actually, I can show you. I can show you how to do that. Um, so, um, what you can do is you can restore the original version of a document. Okay. Um, yes, that is possible. So, um, you could come up here to this little message here. Last edit was two minutes ago. This is how you change the version history. Okay. Uh, version history. Yep. That's version the terminology history. I was thinking. Yep. Of. Thank yep. you. So if you nice. click on that, last minute was three. Um, at, at three minutes ago, then if you click on that, it pops up this box and you, you can choose which version you want. Um, so I originally created this document on Wednesday. So if I want to go back to the original form of the document, I would just click on it. And then I have the option up mm -hmm. here, restore this version, um, and I could click on it. And then it will tell you, and it does give you like two chances. You have to click the restore this version and you have to okay. click restore. Don't so. do it on behalf of me. I see how you work through the steps. I don't want you to have to mess up your versions, but that's really cool. Okay. Yes. So that's okay. how, that's how Thanks. you do it. And then if you want to get, if you click restore this version, it automatically will. If you decide, no, I don't actually want to change the version history. Just click the back button. Mm -hmm. the date. So yes. Um, that could be really helpful. Um, you could have, or you could you could also um, change the name of the document, and you could then create a, yeah. a copy of it and work with yeah. the copy. That would be another option. Yeah. So nice. um, you you could change the name of the document to Tutor Writing Conference or Tutor Conference Writing Prompt Final, for example. Yeah. 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 Nice. Thank you. You're welcome. Good question. I do love questions. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So let's see. Um, so again, with suggestions, whenever you make them, they'll be in green. And if the student accepts the changes, if that's the approach you want to take, um, they'll just click the check mark and the change will be made and the text will turn black. Um, if the student, this is probably more unlikely, but if the student for whatever reason would reject the suggestion, um, then your suggestion would simply disappear. Okay. So, um, so what is the difference, in your own words, between commenting and suggesting? How are comments and suggestions different? Okay, so with the comments, um, you're you're making a comment, but it appears on the side, right? So you would highlight the word that you want to comment on, and then you would click the plus button, and you could add the comment. Uh, you need to make this plural hospitals. And then click comment, 
and no change has been made, right? It's simply um, feedback or a thought or a comment on what's happening over on the left-hand side in the document itself. So this is like notes on the side of a page, right? These are, these are, this is what you'd write in the margins, okay? That's what a comment is. Um, and like I said, you can, you can give explanatory feedback here in a comment, right? But it's not gonna make any changes to the document. But um, if you are in suggesting mode and you wanna make a suggested edit, then um, you would go over to uh, the words you wanna change. So, so this last sentence, I request that you to highlight the issue. You could highlight that. Um, you do not need definitive form you can so um oh wait i'm still making a comment whoops okay um sorry <laughs> so in order to nobody caught me on that come on guys um so uh if if i'm just going to make the suggestion um then i would just come in here and delete it and there okay. now now the suggestion is there and that's all that's all we need okay um so anyways um do so um, what approach do you think you're going to use with your students? Commenting or suggesting or both? Commenting allows them to think what would they change the error to or make the correction mm -hmm. to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and both, eventually both, but that would be first my initial preference, I think. Yeah, 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 I think that's sound. Mm -hmm. Good. Anybody else on comments and suggestions? Okay, we'll play around with it. See what you think works better with your student. Um, I would I would start with comments um, because it does allow you to give your student a little more information um, and it makes them make the change themselves. But um, suggestions would also work if your students just need simple correction. Okay. Um, so um, I want to allow time for discussion. Um, so we'll just go through a few more slides. Um, we're just going to review. All right. Um, so let's say I'm in this document and I want to make a comment. How do I make a comment? What's the process for making a comment? Do you have to click on the <clears throat> green suggestion, suggesting um, tab on the top right-hand corner first In before order, you can choose to make a comment? I forget. Uh, that's a good question. I don't think you have to be in suggesting mode. No. Okay. You can be in editor mode too. Yeah. Good question. Um, yeah. To make a comment, you can be in editor or suggesting mode. Um, so... In order to make a comment, you just highlight what it is you want to comment about and then click the comment button. Okay, so that's how you make a comment. If you want to make a suggestion, then you have to change into suggesting mode and then you can go in the document and make your suggestion. So the comments, We'll just have the words um, that you typed in. The suggestions will appear on the side and in words explain or say exactly what your suggested change is. So comments, you highlight and click the plus sign. You can be in editor or suggesting mode. Suggestions, you need to be in suggesting mode and you just make the change in the document and then the box appears on the right. Okay. All right, um, 
And then um, if I was a student and I wanted to respond to a comment, if I wanted to respond to you need to make this plural hospitals, how would I respond to this? The three dots. Um, good guess. Um, all you need to do is click on it. Yep. And then the, then the chat box appears and you can make, uh, make your comment. The three dots are for if you want to edit or delete the comment. That's what the three dots are for. But to reply, you just click on the comment and then the box pops up. Okay. Um, so let's say how if I want to accept a suggestion, how do I accept a suggestion as a student? Click on the check mark. Click on the check mark. Yep. And if for whatever reason I wanted to reject the suggestion, how does that happen? Click on the X. <laughs> Click on the X. Yep. Okay. So we just got the 10 minute warning uh, but, uh, message. Um, so, uh, and then, um, oh, the only other one was if you wanted to reply to a suggestion, um, you would just click on the suggestion and then you could reply. Um, so those are the three options with suggestions, accept, reject, or reply. Um, okay. so. Um, I definitely planned a lot more material than we're going to be able to get through today. Um, so uh, I understand that you will be getting these slides. Um, so um, <clears throat> there are a number of additional slides in here that kind of show you um, different, different features of Google Docs that you can use. Um, so uh, the different formatting buttons, for example, um, and uh, if and if any of you have used Microsoft Word before, um, these buttons will look familiar. Um, if you want to insert something like a table or picture, you just click on the insert tab and then select table or image. Uh, if you want to click to create a hyperlink, you click on the little a uh, thing that looks like an infinity sign. Um, if you want to change the margins, um, that's under file and then page setup. That's how that works. Um, and then uh, we are, and then to change the name of a document, you would simply come up to where the document is. Um, so if I go back, and I click on the untitled document here. Um, this is what I was talking about. This is another exercise that you could do with your students if you're just doing vocabulary. Um, you could insert pictures and have them just name them. Um, that would be another way you use Google Docs. Uh, and so to change the name of a document, you just click where it says untitled document and it it popped up the suggestion, name that fruit, because that's the first three words that appear at the top of the page. So if you like that, you can just press enter and that'll be that'll be the new name of the document. Um, and then again, if you wanna see all your documents, you just click on the blue home button up there. And also, uh, yeah, the, so, I'm sorry that we didn't have time to go through all the formatting and inserting slides. Uh, I'm sorry I didn't have a chance to demonstrate those, but you do have the slides so you can refer to them. Um, I do also uh, have some uh, suggested resources that you might want to consider using. Um, if you're interested in continuing to learn about Google Docs or other Google products, um, you can always go to this Applied Digital Skills website. Um, and there's many, there's like zillions of courses. So um, if you go and you would select Docs as your digital tool, um, you'll see there's a part one and part two of Docs, uh, as well as other lessons. 
uh, that might be of interest. Uh, North Star Online Learning. North Star is the curriculum that I use to teach the computer classes. Um, so uh, it's possible to set up an account and then with your account, you can do lessons on your own. You can take assessments or tests on your own. Um, so if you think you would like that or your student would benefit from that if, if you wanna incorporate more digital skills instruction, um, just email me and I'll send you an invite um, or send your student an invite and uh, you can help them set up the account. They'll get a link in their email and then you can set up the account from there. Um, for your own continuing edification or your students, um, there's this website called GCF Global. It's the Goodwill's nonprofit. Um, and there's all kinds of free resources on technology that you'll see there. Um, and lastly, this session would not be complete without a little plug for my classes. Uh, so, yay! Um, I do teach free computer classes. Um, if you go to the Literacy Pittsburgh website um, and click programs and then click on computer skills, um, just click on the Allegheny County schedule and you'll be able to see what I'm currently offering. Um, you can also feel free to email me um, with any questions or to ask about when open lab hours are. So I do two things. I teach classes and then I offer open lab. An open lab is a time when you can come in and um, work on whatever computer skill it is you'd like to work on. So um, if, you, if you or your students think you might benefit from a little extra digital skills instruction, uh, I would love to have you join us or open lab. So, um, all right, we have four minutes. <laughs> um, I guess I'd like to know, um, well, first of all, if you have any questions and if you don't, um, I'd like to know how you might use Google Docs with your students. So are there any questions? I know. Yeah, quick question. Definitely. This PowerPoint is amazing. Thank you, Adriana. Okay. This is so nice. Are you going to email this out to us? Is this going to be saved on some sort of final compilation of everything that was talked about in the workshop? I, I believe so. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's super awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Yes. You're welcome. Um, just um, I'm, I'm like 99% sure that's going to happen, but on the off chance that it doesn't, um, here is my email in the chat, um, and you could always just tell me, okay. but I'm, I'm pretty sure Roberta said that everybody would be getting the slides. That's why I took time to make them look nice. <laughs> yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Great, great. Any other questions? All right. Um, how then do you, I mean, obviously um, you took this course today because you thinking about possibly using Google Docs with your students, or maybe you already do. Um, I'd just be interested to know what you're currently doing or what you might be planning on doing, how, how you see yourself uh, using Google Docs. I hope you're going to use it. <laughs> okay, I got one. That's awesome. going to be really, in my sense, it's going to be uh, great for sharing how we can edit, obviously, with our students to see what we're editing for the purpose of understanding English. But this is meaningful in a way that's also folding into student learning how to improve some job skills. Yes. Even if they're not working in the kind of industry where they need to use a computer for their job, should in fact they need to use it, they're already that much further ahead. And that is nice. You get like both um, yes. tackled all at once. So yes. I am so excited about this. I'll be definitely oh, using this. Good. Right. Good. That's wonderful. Also, it's so interesting that we practically have the same name. <laughs> Just I get mine misspelled like yours all the time, but you probably think it's correct and mine is the opposite so I think yours is incorrect it's funny oh yeah whenever somebody right. spells my name I'm like no that's not it <laughs> <laughs> oh exactly yeah yeah correct spelling of of my name and your name uh, is a challenge for people yeah my parents added the extra n okay yeah 
Any other last thoughts about how you might use Google Docs? Okay, well, um, if you, uh, hopefully you have plans. Um, uh, again, if you have any questions, um, uh, maybe you jump into using Google Docs and you forget something, um, you're welcome to email me anytime. And <clears throat> like I said, um, you should be getting a copy of the slides. Uh, so if you have any questions about anything on the slides, especially the slides that we did not end up going through. Um, and like I said, if you want your students to have more digital literacy, or if you want more digital literacy, then I would say uh, North Star is a good option, uh, or, or my classes in person. Um, typically, oh, I should mention, all my classes right now are in person. I do occasionally offer online classes, though. It just varies from month to month. So um, also the location of where I teach is varies from month to month. So, um, but all of that is on the schedule. So uh, this month I'll be teaching all at Literacy Pittsburgh. So um, thank you very much for attending my session today and for your participation and um, have fun with your students. Thank 